Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. Long black clothes, 1975 long post 1975 and welcome to a driving vlog it's Monday morning I wasn't gonna do anything today um, but then I thought I haven't done a driving vlog for ages and as I always say they're quick and easy and very convenient and and my windscreen is absolutely filthy and it's raining so that doesn't really help matters does it but I was uh, at lunch you know when you open Google on your phone and dependent upon any of the recent searches you have done it sticks a bunch of articles in there that it thinks you would be interested in reading and I was one of them I very much was so and that was an article by Bloomberg is it Bloomberg on a website called Gizmodo that's a guess, because what was it? Is it Gizmodo or Gizmondo? Which one of those was a handheld console? Anyway, it says that Sony are really struggling to keep the manufacturing cost of the PlayStation 5 down. And this got me thinking, uh, because it kind of ties into a video I did ages ago. Um, that was Microsoft uh, will have no exclusives for 18 months uh, for the Xbox One Series X. Instead, all titles that would be released on that will be released on all the other Xbox consoles in the you know in the family of consoles. So Xbox One X, obviously Series X would look the best, um, and Xbox One S. And depending on which one you have, would be how good or well, you know um, shining fantastic the game would look. Sort of like a multi-tier kind of PC system which I was a big fan of at the time I mentioned that in my vlog I thought it was a really really good idea that kind of looking after their customers and saying you don't have to jump ship immediately you know we understand that purchasing a new console is a big deal and can be you know quite costly and uh, obviously it's not for everyone that not everyone is an early adopter so anyway I'm getting off the tangent but that does tie into this and suddenly this makes that seem like good move Microsoft I think that's a very very shrewd and clever move so anyway now, is this, you know, take it with a pinch of salt, is this true, uh, have, uh, is the smoke and mirrors by Sony, because any publicity is good publicity, you know, but basically they're saying that the manufacturing cost of a unit for the PlayStation 5 is $450 or 340 or thereabouts pounds, which means, essentially, the magic um, number that people would hope a console would come in for, so I'm told, is $400, round about £400 in this country, because even though there's always an exchange rate difference, usually in our favour, we always get flooded with a ton of excuses by console manufacturers and why we have to pay the same in pounds as they would in dollars. I call bullshit and greedy bastards. Anyway, so what this means is, essentially, that the, the cost at launch could be quite high and essentially off-putting because um, if it's going to be $450, safe to say, it's at least, at least going to be $500 or, you know, or, you know, because I think it's safe to say they're not going to take a hit in the pocket and, you know, lose money on these, on, on the console because when some people will be saying, well, hang on a minute, there'll always be early adopters regardless of the price and stuff like that. Well, that wasn't necessarily the case way back in 2006 when the PlayStation 3 came out, that price hurt it a lot and it spent a lot of that generation playing catch up you know and Sony lost a lot of money on it now I know essentially um, they won that generation you know right at the end but there's no denying the very early years particularly the launch period and the months afterwards for the PlayStation 3 hurt Sony hurt Sony a lot and also they made no money on that console whatsoever they took a loss on it because traditionally in these things lots of people take losses on consoles and stuff like that because you make your money back on the games however safe to say they won't want to do that again because the PlayStation 4 uh, ran it a profit I think it was something literally as small as maybe 20 quid UK 
per you know console, which to you and I sounds absolutely ridiculously small. But when you sell that many units, you know, and you're in it for making money off the game, and you sell that many units that absolutely wipe the floor of that generation of consoles, that's good. There's no denying that that's good. So safe to say they don't really want to go back to you know the the model of. Um, PlayStation 3 where you're going to lose money on every unit and then try and make it back on the games because obviously they were lagging in sales because of the price and that to me would be and again these are just my thoughts my opinions by all means correct me if I'm wrong I'm not an expert I'm just a bloke vlogging in his mini on his way home from work but yeah so you know whatever the price they launch this thing at they're not going to take a loss and I'm pretty sure of that absolutely not because of the success of the PlayStation 4 but what do they price it at and $500 500 quid, uh, maybe, all right, for fairness, we'll say 450 pounds, 479 or something like that. Um, that's a lot. That is an absolute huge amount, you know, at launch. And obviously at launch, regardless of what killer apps may be on it, you're still going to be faced with the inevitable drought of a lack of games. So this is where I thought, do you know what? This is where it's absolutely fantastic. And Microsoft have proven that they're going the route they're going makes sense. Because think about it, right? So it comes in at $500, £479. There will be people who adopt it, but it's not, you know, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, if you think this is, you know, me just talking bollocks, but it's not, it's not going to be massively popular, you know, fly off the shelves. That is too much money for people. But however, then all these killer apps, you know, because Sony have gone the route of saying, you know, everything's going to be exclusive to the PlayStation 5. That's all well and good, but you, you aren't selling consoles for everyone else to get and play those killer apps, which means you're not going to be selling loads of those apps. And essentially, you divided your, your customer base in two. Those who could afford to buy a PlayStation 5 at launch and those who could not, however, are now being deprived of the ability to play these killer apps that you've based your marketing and your whole approach to this generation or this launch of, you know, generation nine of consoles. So yeah, you're saying, okay, Rich Kids, here you go, PlayStation 5, enjoy these killer apps. Everyone else, thanks for supporting us for all these years and stuff like that. You can't play them. You can't play them until you buy a PlayStation 5. Not really a sort of, you know, um, nice sort of reward uh, or gesture towards your loyal customer base, but obviously that's where Microsoft have got it, you know. These people have been with us, we've learned our mistakes from the launch of Xbox, you're welcome, uh, him not you, Xbox One, you know, in the box launch and stuff like that, and obviously we've realised that they're, they're important to us, not everyone wants to jump ship. Also, you know, we don't know what price Xbox One Series X is going to come in at, but I'm pretty sure it's probably you know, going to be on, at the very least, a par with the PlayStation 5. So to some degree, Microsoft have obviously realised that that faces kind of the same problem. Saying that this is true, that Sony are having problems, you know, keeping the cost of their, their system down. Who knows? Maybe before, um, obviously he wouldn't give away, he's a fucking taxi. You know, maybe before we get to the, the launch window, Sony waved their magic wand and they, you know, the price has come down or they've found a way to do it or uh, I think it's to do with shortage of chips as well so that's unlikely or they've just decided to take it hit the pocket but you know let's just go with the fact that it's going to be expensive so <clears throat> yeah um, this, 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 this is just why Microsoft are brilliant. they're just saying right so basically all right you know you can all enjoy all of these big 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 titles we don't think it's fair only those who can fork out you know five hundred dollars five hundred quid on a new console get to enjoy these you know um, we appreciate your loyalty and we'll reward it um, depending upon the machine you have um, you know that's that's you know that's the quality of the game you're going to get but it will be there and it will be supported as best it can on whatever system you have that's why that's basically saying we don't know how well this thing's going to do so at the same time we're not going to cut our nose off to spite our face you know because these will be trickle down sales for those who can afford this system brilliant everyone else you can still buy the games we make money from that system of itself as well we make money from the games on that but we make it across all the other systems as well because now we're a multi tiered platform whereas sony's approach is they are cutting the nose off despite their face and they're basically you know ignoring the fact that if, if it if, because if it is expensive and does affect sales and like i said you've only got to look at the launch of playstation 3 then they're completely missing the opportunity of you know covering their asses and saying and you would have thought they would have drawn this in as a contingency plan way 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 back when they were developing 
you know, PlayStation 5 and stuff like that. What happens if the cost goes up and things like this? What happens if we can't get certain chips and, and stuff? But yeah, so to allow that trickle down effect of games, which is where you make your money across, you know, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro. And the other thing is, obviously, take advantage of these mid generation consoles because, you know, while people may not want to jump, I'm more so talking about Microsoft here, may not want to jump straight over to you know the most powerful one because prices will come down immediately you know in the wake of the Xbox One Series X being released. They may look around at the offers you know that you're seeing, especially along with places like Amazon and think, do you know what? I'm not ready to go for that yet. But since they're still gonna support you know all their consoles with these you know exclusives. I might get myself a, a, a you know an Xbox One X and you know take a take advantage of a little bit more grunt, a little bit more power. You know we're not on Generation Nine, but we're getting we're getting a lot more than the base, you know, the base system. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is I really think that this this problem, whether it is true, we don't know if it is as yet. That maybe it's like I said, just guff and smoke and mirrors put out there by Sony because any sort of you know um, <clears throat> attention is good attention, uh, but. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think Sony, you may be cutting your nose off to spite your face now that your 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 launch, your, your approach to Generation Nine um, of this, you know, these consoles is to now nah, nah, all the exclusives will be on that and not the PlayStation Four and the PlayStation Four Pro. Because as I said, if you do have a hype, obviously, like I said, um, if I say like I said one more time, I'm going to punch me. <laughs> there will be early adopters, but if it's a high price, as I said, look at the PlayStation 3, they won't necessarily be in the numbers that they thought, so why not take advantage of the trickle down effect that Microsoft clearly have seen and identified and will be doing so? And no, this is not me being a fanboy for Microsoft, this is just me calling it out as an observation. Uh, as always, I'd love to know what you think. Like I said, these are just observations upon reading that and obviously what I said about Microsoft's approach to, you know, uh, no exclusives in a video a few months ago. Yeah, I am aware I've waffled a bit all over the shop on this one. But anyway, as always, I would absolutely love to know what you think. Uh, unless you are just going to buy a PlayStation 5 at launch, regardless of the price, I would definitely like to know that. Same with buying an Xbox One Series X at launch, uh, regardless of the price. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later.